What's up everyone and welcome to Labs with Lamb. Today we're going to be doing a percent yield lab, so we're going to be comparing the amount of product we should theoretically get and the amount we get experimentally. We'll be working with an electronic scale and a filter paper slash funnel combo, and I'll explain how we use that later on. As always, make sure you've gone through the procedure and that you have your observation table handy. And if you're all ready to go, then let's do this thing. All right, so the reaction we're going to be looking at today is between sodium carbonate over here and calcium chloride right here. But before we conduct the experiment, we're going to need to weigh everything. So let's go ahead and do that. First up is our dry filter paper. We're going to need this for later, so make sure you write the mass down in your observation table. All right, pretty straightforward here. Next up is our beaker. I don't actually need the mass of this, so we're going to zero it out. This will let us determine the mass of the sodium carbonate we're going to put inside it. We're aiming for about 0.80 grams, but we want to record what we actually use. Ah, overshot it a little bit, but that's okay. Again, make sure you record what you actually used, not what you were aiming for. Okay, one more beaker. And again, we're just going to zero at the mass of the beaker so that we can measure the mass of the calcium chloride that's going inside it. Getting closer here. And perfect. Or just over. No worries. Write that down and we can move on. Now that we have both of our chemicals measured out, we can dissolve them in water. I'm using a wash bottle to add water because it helps me keep the sodium carbonate from clumping together and it speeds up the dissolving process. Still, this usually takes a while, so I'll fast forward through most of it. Just a quick note, I wanted you to notice that the calcium chloride is way more soluble, so I don't have to add as much water. Once both solutes are completely dissolved, I'm going to pour my calcium chloride solution into my sodium carbonate solution. Notice the way that I'm pouring it. I'm going to pour it against the stirring rod to minimize any spillage. I'm also going to add a bit more water to my calcium chloride beaker just to rinse it out along with the stirring rod and try to get all the calcium chloride into my reaction. I'll give this a quick stir. And while we wait for the reaction to complete, let me go grab some filter paper and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. All right, this is pretty simple. We're just going to fold it in half. And then fold it in half again, so quarters. Now, to place it in the funnel, I'm going to find this little pocket, open it up, and I'm going to hold it down in the funnel. Now, I'm going to use the wash bottle to wet the filter paper just a little bit, which will cause it to adhere to the funnel and stay where it is. All right, now the filtration. I'm going to stir the solution to suspend the precipitate. And then again, I'm going to place my stirring rod against the lip of the beaker as I pour to minimize any spilling. It's a pretty useful trick. Now 
So it looks like this is going to take a few rounds. So we'll wait for most of it to filter through and then we'll add some more. 11 minutes later. Okay, round two. Again, stirring to suspend the precipitate and pouring against the rod. Mmm, definitely still needs a couple more rounds. 15 minutes later. Round three. You know the drill by now. And okay, probably only need one more after this. Two hours later. All right, last time here, everyone. And that's it for that. But I'm going to add some more water and try to get all the precipitate out. Unfortunately, it's always hard to get all of it, but we'll do our best. And now we wait just one last time. One eternity later. All right, it looks like all the water has filtered through, so I'm going to leave it overnight and it should be dry by tomorrow. The next day. Welcome back, everyone. So all we have left to do now is to measure the mass of the precipitate. I'm actually going to measure the precipitate while it's still in the filter paper instead of trying to get all of it off the filter paper and risk losing more. All right, here's the final mass, and that's all you need to finish up your lab. Also, the filter paper is just a tad moist, so that's definitely worth noting. Best of luck. If you find that you need a little extra help, please feel free to check out my other videos for tips and tricks on how to succeed in school. And as always, thanks for learning with Lamb.